Shalom everyone, praise, honor, and esteem to Ab Yahuwah through his son Yahusha HaMashiach. In case you want to get in touch with us, here are our contact details. You can also support us in a variety of ways. And I hope you will find this video useful. We are going to address the book of Hebrews. I do agree with the authors that the book of Hebrews indeed details a transition. This transition is from Judaism, as they call it, to Christianity. The Judaism they talk about here is the same or similar to what we know as Judaism today. Judaism based on Talmud and Mishnah and many other man-made traditions. So is Christianity as we know today. However, this transition they talk about in this book of Hebrews is not to the Christianity of today. It is to following Yahusha HaMashiach as the Badit Chadasha or the New Testament shows us. There are two distinct persons. One of them is Jesus of Christianity and the other one is Yahusha HaMashiach, the real Mashiach. And this is what we see in the book of Hebrews. I'll be using blue letter Bible because this makes life much easier than me using my other software. If we pay careful attention to the beginning of the book of Hebrews, we can already see that there is no moving away from Torah. There cannot be and there isn't. It starts as follows, Elohim, after he spoke long ago to the fathers in the prophets in many portions and in many ways. This is, by the way, the New American Standard Bible. In these last days, talking about the days of Yahusha HaMashiach, has spoken to us in his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. If he spoke to us long ago through the prophets, this has to be the same message which he is sending us through his Son. And listen to what he says in verse 3, and he is the radiance of his esteem or glory and the exact representation of his nature and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he had made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels of Malachim, as he has inherited a more excellent name than they. Even from this we can see that Torah doesn't change, and there is no need for anything to change other than the priesthood and the manner of sacrifices. If the Son is the radiance of the esteem of the Father and His exact representation, this word representation in the Greek is karakter. We can think of this as an engraving or carving or a graving tool. Something we can create a figure, mark stamped upon that instrument or wrought out on it exact copy or figuratively a representation, express image of something. Think about it this way, if the father does not change as Malachiah 3.6 says it, then his son, his word that became flesh, as Yehuchanan or John 1st chapter 14 says it, cannot be anything different from what he had already shown humanity through the so-called Old Testament. He does not change. So his son, who came and through whom he spoke to us, radiates the same esteem as he always has. This is the reason why John writes us in his first episode, second chapter 6 verse, the one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. He meaning Yahusha HaMashiach. And if we walk the same way as he walked, we are going to be the radiance of His, the Father's esteem, and His exact representation. And we will be able to show the world His nature. But we need to walk the same way as Yahusha HaMashiach walked. We cannot teach something else and say that in spite of all that, somehow we are still in Him. But as the authors point out this correctly in this writing, there is a change in the priesthood, and there is a change in the law. But notice the Amplified Bible says, change of the law concerning priesthood as well. So how can we not see what the change is about? 
the change concerns the priesthood. They assume this change of priesthood required a new covenant, which means the old covenant, the law of Moshe, is no longer valid and had to be abolished. No one said that. Even in their version, it is quite clear that a change concerns the priesthood, not the law of Moshe. One cannot just ignore details like this when we are dealing with the word of Elohim. The book of Hebrews does not talk about the Torah. Actually, no one ever talks about changing or abolishing or destroying the Torah. And fulfilled doesn't mean that we do not need to do that. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11 says. Now listen to what Hebrews chapter 7 verse 11 says. Now if perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, for on the basis of it the people received the law, what further need was there for another priest to arise according to the order of Melech Tzaddik or Melchizedek and not to be designated according to the order of Aaron? Melchi Tzaddik, king of righteousness, Melchizedek. For when the priesthood is changed of necessity, there takes place a change of law also. Well, there is a change, of course, in the law, but it does not concern Torah. It does, however, concerns sacrifices and the way we get atonement for our sins and the way the mediation between us and Elohim the Father happens. Sin remains sin and that is lawlessness as Yehuchanan in his first epistle, chapter 3, verse 4, defines everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness and sin is lawlessness. Please remember that we are dealing with the change of the law that concerns the priesthood. It does not concern the Torah. It does, however, concern Kahuna, which is the priesthood. In Hebrews chapter 10, we are shown this change. Listen carefully and you'll understand what part of the law this concerns. For the law, since it has only a shadow of good things to come and not the very form of things, talking about sacrifices, can never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make perfect those who draw near. It does not talk about Torah as what defines sin, but it talks about sacrifices and atonement for the breaking of Torah. Chatat, sin. Otherwise would they not have ceased to be offered, offering, Sacrifices, because the worshippers, having once been cleansed through sacrifices, atonement, would no longer have had consciousness of sins. Sin stands, Torah stands. What's changed is atonement for sin. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins year by year. It talks about sin, breaking Torah, and how one gets atonement how we can be reconciled with Elohim, and that is through Yahusha HaMashiach's perfect sacrifice, which needed to be done once forever. He is head of the new priesthood. He is our perfect sacrifice. This is the change we read about, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 11 and 12. Hence it says, change of the law concerning priesthood. It does not concern Torah. The author has already defined us what he's going to talk about in the next few paragraphs. Not that there were chapters back in those days. However, clearly these letters were divided along the messages certain parts conveyed to us. And this part concerns sacrifices and offerings. This is all we've read so far. For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. It still talks about sacrifice. It does not talk about changing Torah. Let me just add, I understand sacrifices and priesthood is part of Torah. Leviticus, Waikra, is part of Torah. I understand that. What I'm saying is, the law, as people like to call it, changed only regarding priesthood and sacrifices as Elohim foresaw the destruction of the temple and the coming changes in the lifestyle of people. Therefore, verse 5, when he comes into the world, he says sacrifice, again he says sacrifice, and offering you have not desired, 
but a body you have prepared for me. And again, in whole burnt offerings, sacrifices for sin, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the scroll of the book it is written of me to do your will, O Elohim. Look how many times chapter 10 mentions sacrifice and offerings. Every single verse is about this because the change concerns the Levitical priesthood, sacrifices, temple. After saying above, sacrifices and offerings and whole burnt offerings and for sin you have not desired and still carries on talking about the Levitical orders, nor have you taken pleasure which I offered according to the law, Leviticus, Huayikra. Then he said, Behold, I have come to do your will. He takes away the first in order to establish the second. What is he talk about? The priesthood. He takes away the first, Levitical priesthood, and establishes the second according to Malachi Tzedek or Malachi Tzedek. And we are at chapter 10, verse 9, and still have not talked about anything else but sacrificing and offerings for sin. By this will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Yahusha HaMashiach once and for all. Now we understand that the order of Melachi Tzedek means that sacrificing no longer required because there is a priest, a high priest, Kohen Hagadol, Yahusha HaMashiach, who his perfect sacrifice, which he made once, set all of us believers clean. So what is the change about? It does not concern the law of Moshe, it concerns part of it, which is Leviticus. That is about priesthood, sacrifices and offerings. And it is being made crystal clear in Hebrews chapter 10. We can still observe the same thing, priesthood, offerings, sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Sins remain. But he having offered one sacrifice for sins for all time, sat down at the right hand of Elohim, waiting from that time onward until his enemies be made a footstool for his feet. For by one offering he has perfected for all time those who are set apart. We are at verse 14 and have not talked about anything else but sacrifices and offering. And now the famous quotation from Yermiahu or Jeremiah 31, 31. Because after all this, all will understand whomever has the Ruach HaKodesh or the Holy Spirit, what the renewed covenant will be about and whom it is for. This covenant that I will make with them after those days, says Yahuwah, I will put my Torah upon their heart and on their mind I will write them. So how can we say that it has changed when it was back in Tanakh? It was back in the time when Torah meant Torah. In Yeremiahu chapter 31 verse 33, it says, I will put my law within them and on their heart I will write it. That law is Torah. Hage. 8451 Torah. Listen to this. Torah means direction, instruction, body of prophetic teaching, law, a custom or manner. Gesenius says Torah means instruction or doctrine, law, human, the manner and principles which man follow. Think about this for a second. He will make a renewed covenant. Actually, he renews the first covenant with better promises and with a different priesthood. And the purpose of a priest is to mediate between Elohim and man and help getting atonement for sins. He will write his Torah in our hearts. He says here, Torah, this cannot mean a different one in the Barid Chadesha or the Renewed Covenant because nothing indicates it here. He's talking about Torah and he's going to put it inside of us. There is the same promise in Ezekiel or Ezekiel chapter 11. And listen to this. 
Therefore says Yahuwah, I will gather you from the people and assemble you out of the countries among which you have been scattered and I will give you the land of Israel. This has not happened. We cannot say that those people in Israel are these people. They are different ones. Hence, this is a future prophecy even for us. When they come there, they will remove all its detestable things and all its abominations from it. I will give them one heart and put a new Ruach within them. I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh. And this is Tanakh, Yechizkiah, that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. Then they will be my people and I shall be their Elohim. You see, the new Ruach and the new heart means that we walk in his Torah. Same book, Yechizkiah, chapter 36. For I will take you from the nations, verse 24, gather you from all the lands and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you'll be clean. I'll cleanse you from all your filthiness and from your idols. Moreover, I'll give you a new heart and put a new ruach or spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my ruach within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Yet moreover, I will save you from all your uncleanness and I will call for the grain and multiply it and I will not bring famine upon you. This is what Yeremiahu writes about as well. This is the same renewal of the covenant. Now, his Torah is not going to be on pieces of stone engraven in it, but it will be in our hearts. But if it is in our hearts, we must walk in it as his ruach or his spirit will animate that person, will bring that new heart to life through the works, which shows what Ruach is in that person? This is what the author of Hebrews talking about. Levitical priesthood and sacrifices and offerings change. However, the Torah remains the same. If you look at it, we can see the blood of Yahusha HaMashiach. That is the new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. It doesn't mean Torah changes or be abolished or fulfilled. It just means that there is a different priesthood, a different mediator, and a change in the way one gets atonement for his sin. Let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Yechizkiah 36, 25 says, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. And after this, he puts his Torah in our hearts and gives us his Ruach to dwell in us. And the book of Hebrews explain this process to the people reading it. We have a new priest, new priesthood, New way of sacrificing and getting atonement for our sins. After this, we'll understand verse 26, which says, For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer remains a sacrifice for our sins, because Torah stands firm, showing us what sin is, and we need atonement for our sins. But there is no willful, breaking of the Torah after we understand what truth is because nothing's changed but the priesthood and the laws regarding sacrifices and offerings. If one go on sinning willfully, a terrifying expectation of judgment remains and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Whomever breaks Torah willfully is an adversary. Hypenenteos someone opposite to, set over against, opposed to, contrary, an adversary. If one breaks Torah willfully, he is an adversary, opposed to truth. 
28, anyone who sets aside the law of Moshe dies without mercy on two or three witnesses. Look what these people say, this change of priesthood required a new covenant, which means the old covenant, the law of Moshe, is no longer valid and had to be abolished. And we just read this, that anyone who has set aside the law of Moshe dies without mercy on two or three witnesses. And now there is a new so-called covenant. How much severer punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the son of Elohim? and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant which by he was set apart, and has insulted the ruach of favor. So the renewed covenant not only keeps the law of Moshe, but makes the punishment for breaking it much more severe. Now we can move on, and let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. Yes, the renewed covenant will make the first one obsolete, but the renewed covenant has not fully in effect yet. And this is exactly what Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 says. When he said a renewed covenant, he has made the first obsolete, but whatever is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to disappear. It did not disappear back then, it has not disappeared yet. It says growing old means getting old is ready to disappear. It has not disappeared yet. The footnote says near disappearance, near disappearing. It cannot be obsolete now because it's just growing older and it is getting ready to disappear. It is still here. That's exactly what Hebrews chapter 8, this is what it says literally. And it says the same thing here. Growing old is ready to disappear. We cannot just ignore these words here and say, oh, it's already obsolete. It's not obsolete yet. It is getting old, growing old, getting ready to disappear, but it is still in effect. How so? In Jeremiah or Yirmiyahu chapter 31, we see in 34, they who will not teach again each man his neighbor and each man his brother. This has not happened yet, saying, No, Yahuwah, for they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, declares Yahuwah. Not all people knows Yahuwah Elohim, and people still need to be taught. Shaul says in Romans chapter 10 that Yahuwah sent some prophets, apostles, teachers, ordained these people to lead his elect. So the renewed covenant has not started fully because this part of this prophecy is yet to be fulfilled. Then they cite in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 8, by this the Ruach HaKodesh signifies that the way into the holy or set apart place, the true Kodesh Kadashim and the presence of Elohim has not yet been disclosed as long as the first outer tabernacle is still standing this cannot be disclosed. That is, as long as the Levitical system of worship remains a recognized institution. Again, it's talking about the same thing, sacrifices, offering, and priesthood. It does not talk about the other parts of Torah. It cannot talk about them. As it says, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 9, Accordingly, both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make the worshiper perfect in conscience, since they relate to food, and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until the time of reformation. It does not talk about Leviticus chapter 11, the so-called dietary law, nor does it talk about Leviticus chapter 23, the list of the feasts. This talks about sacrifices and offerings, and the various regulations for the priesthood, because those people needed to be washed, dressed, purified in order for them to be able to take part in the system of worship. Our new high priest has no need of such maneuvers. He was perfect, he is perfect, and he is the perfect sacrifice, the perfect Kohen Hagadol or high priest. He is the mediator, he is the atonement for the sins 
which is the breaking of Torah, and he is in the true tabernacle, which is in Hashemaim, or heavens. All the book of Hebrews talk about is sacrifices, priesthood, and the system of worship. He does not touch the other parts of Torah. We can go on and on here. In chapter 9, verse 12, it says blood of goats and calves, and then compares this to Yahusha HaMashiach's own blood, still talking about atonement, sacrifices, and offering, eternal redemption, and then again, blood of goats and bulls, ashes, verse 14, blood of HaMashiach, offering himself, and says, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. Dead work is not Torah. Dead work is what the world does, following after their own hearts, doing their own thing, their own ordinances, laws and regulations, setting aside Elohim's commandments, as it says Marcus or Mark, chapter 7. Now we have a new mediator of a renewed covenant. The old covenant has been and being renewed. The death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant. For the transgressions that were committed. We needed a new way of redemption. It is written for us here plainly. What the new or renewed covenant is about. Torah in our hearts. Ruach HaKodesh dwells in us. And we have a new high priest, a new sacrifice, and a new way of redemption and system of worship. And we get eternal life through our new mediator. You understand now when he says, therefore even the first covenant meaning was not inaugurated without blood. The second needs blood as well. They are assuming here again this falsehood that the old covenant is abolished. Yes, it is abolished. Sacrifices, offerings, priesthood and system of worship as they correctly note here. And it is not new, it's a renewed covenant. But it Chadasha, renewed covenant. Truthfully, I don't even need the blue letter Bible because everything is here. They just can't seem to understand what's written here. For this reason, he is a mediator and negotiator of a new covenant, or renewed covenant, that is, an entirely new agreement uniting Elohim and man. No, that's not an entirely new agreement. We have read Yechizikal chapter 11, chapter 36, and Yirmiyahu chapter 31. This is not an entirely new covenant. The old laws going to be in our heart, and he gives us his Ruach. Only thing that is new is the way of atonement and the system of worship. So this is a falsehood, so that those who have been called may receive the fulfillment of the promised eternal inheritance is that death has taken place as a payment for what? Which redeems them from the sins committed under the obsolete first covenant. Obsolete? There is no obsolete here. Let me show you this. For this reason, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that since the death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant those who have been called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance we just read it hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 that the old covenant is growing old and is ready to disappear it has not disappeared yet we cannot just add things to it we cannot just say obsolete when there's no obsolete there. The purpose of the book of Hebrews is to explain the necessary changes that took place in the transition from Judaism to Christianity. Yeah, we saw that. Change the system of worship, all the nonsense that they added, the Talmud, the Mishnah, their own traditions. We have a new system of sacrifice and offering, way of worship, way of redemption and atonement for the sins. It does not talk about the rest of the Torah. The Christian Jews wanted to include the law of Moshe and circumcision in their new faith in HaMashiach. Well, we have already read that whomever abides in him, he must walk as he walked. He was circumcised, he followed Torah, so anyone who says he is in Yahusha HaMashiach, led by the Ruach HaKodesh, and lives in him, living in his Mashiach, must walk as he 
walked. Simple as that. The old covenant was not abolished and it has not been abolished fully. It is ready to disappear and it's growing old. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. It is quite bizarre that in chapter 10, it's Hebrews verse 8, they have it here. He does away with the first covenant as means of atoning for sin based on animal sacrifices. And yet they talk about abolishing Torah and the law of Moshe. It is right here. He does away with the first covenant as means of atoning for sin based on animal sacrifices so that he may inaugurate, establish the second covenant by means of obedience. Obedience to what? If there is no law of Moshe or Torah, there is nothing to be obedient to. It says it right here. Let me read it again. He does away with the first covenant as a means of atoning for sin based on animal sacrifices because there is a new way of atonement for sins. But nothing else has changed. In the next video we are going to deal with the letter of Shaul to the Colossians because there are some gross misunderstandings and misrepresentations of what he was saying in this writing at least. Should you want to get in touch with us, here's our contact details and we are looking forward to hearing from you. In case you'd like to support us, that's much appreciated. Praise, honor and esteem to Abba Yahuwah through his son Yahusha HaMashiach. Shalom.